Morning, folks. I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School, and I'm back down here today at the Pathfinder Outdoor Classroom. What I want to do is I want to do a complete backpack analysis with you today, starting with pack selection, why I selected the pack that I have and developed the pack that I use, which is the Pathfinder Scout Pack. And this is a new color coming out in about two weeks, and it's dark earth with OD accents. We'll talk about how that pack is set up, and then we're going to talk about some key bullet points on the things that we pack in that pack and how we pack them, as well as seasonal considerations. And I think it's important to understand some of these concepts so that when you select a pack and you begin to pack your backpack, you can kind of keep these things in the back of your head as a little miniature toolbox or checklist to go through. So stay with me, guys, and we'll get started. Okay, so before we get into the backpack, what's in the backpack, and all of this gear, Let's go through this backpack analysis bullet point list here because we'll refer back to these as we're talking along the way. The first concept is the 10 C's. We're always going to have those 10 C's within our backpack system. And you can refer to my older videos or read any of my books to get an explanation on the 10 C's of survivability. However, that does not mean necessarily 10 items. It's 10 categories of items. And that's a big mistake people make. They think they should only need those 10 items or 10 C's. Yeah, there's 10 C's, but they're categories of items, cutting tools, combustion devices, containers, and so on. So when we look at the second bullet point, this Pathfinder rule of threes, this is not the rule of threes that you're used to seeing blasted all over the internet of three minutes without air, three days without water, 30 minutes of exposure, because to me, all of that is pretty much bunk because you can die in way less than three minutes by bleeding out and it's never on the list. So that list to me is a moot point. The Pathfinder rule of threes really involves multiple things to do similar tasks. Two is one, one is none. I say three is better, okay? A good example of that, if we drop down to the next level here, we talk about the two thirds sleep system rule. And what that means is that two thirds of my backpack's weight or bulk or both is most likely going to be my sleep system. And it will involve three main elements, something to sleep in, something to sleep on, and something to sleep under. So I may have three to four separate pieces of gear to cover that, but they all fall under that cover element within the 10 C's, which also includes the clothing on your back. So the 10 C's is multifaceted and you just need to understand that as we go through this as well. Next bullet point is seasonal considerations. And we'll talk a little bit about that in this video today. But is it cold enough that you're going to need an ax? Or are you in an area where a saw is not going to be as effective as an ax for bucking up firewood for your camp? And really, when you're talking about backpacking, you're talking about traveling and camping in the woods and things like that, the important thing is, is that you can build fire with the elements around you. All of the crafting things are second in importance by a long shot to that fire. So when I'm looking at what tools I'm going to carry, I'm looking at what tools does it take for me to make fire and maintain it. And if the weather's very, very cold outside, or if there's not very many small trees in the area and things of that nature, then I may choose to carry an ax. And that's why it's listed on here separately, because generally speaking, I do not carry an ax unless I'm on the trap line or unless it's the dead of winter, I will carry a saw. And we'll talk more about that in a few minutes. Our value. Our value is important, especially in cold weather camping. Getting yourself up off the ground to avoid conduction is very, very important. You can do that with sleep pads. You can do that with a hammock that has an underquilt. And I've got underquilt listed here as well. So those are seasonal considerations that you may need to add to your backpack or swap things out. If you're hammock camping all of the time, you may not always need an underquilt. Sometimes you may need a heavier underquilt and an overquilt than other times. Sometimes you may not need either one in the dead of summer. The same thing goes with sleeping on the ground. In the dead of summer, you can get away with a fairly thin 
low R value sleep pad in the winter time, you need to get yourself something that's like above five R value, like five to seven R value to be able to battle that conduction. If you're not planning on using lots of debris off the landscape to build that four inches of compressed material you need to battle conduction, you need to carry it with you. And I wouldn't plan on doing all of this bushcrafting stuff unless that's your intent. If you're just planning to go out for a weekend camping and enjoy yourself and I have to do a lot of work, carry a sleep system that enables you to not have to put in a lot of work to get a good night's sleep. We'll talk about that as we go. The last one is what I call stack pack methodology. How am I gonna pack this backpack? What's gonna be on the bottom? What's gonna be on the top? What's gonna be in the top pocket? What's gonna be on the outside easily accessible? Those things are all important. And part of the reasons for the design of this backpack to begin with that we'll talk about in a few minutes. Okay, so let's first talk about the backpack itself because this is gonna contain everything that you are going to carry with you in the woods, obviously. And the reason this backpack was designed the way it was was to take advantage of things you may need and make things that you need more often easily accessible, as well as making a comfortable backpack that was heavy duty. And this is 1000 denier material, YKK zippers, military grade buckles, military grade webbing. Everything on this thing is heavy duty. For $164.95, I think the price is of this thing, it's hard to beat. And it does have a lifetime manufacturer's warranty on it against defects. So you're getting a lot for your money. Now, let's talk about a couple key elements in this pack. First of all, it's a 35 liter roll top pack. So you could probably squeeze 40 into it, but it's considered a 35 liter pack. Okay, so the front of this pack does not have a bunch of molly webbing on it. I don't think that is a necessity. If I wanna put a bunch of extra pouches on this thing, I would've just had the pouches made on the pack itself, like this one here at the bottom, we'll talk about in a minute. It does, however, have some molly on the sides if you wanted to attach a water bottle pouch or something like that. The pockets on this pack on the sides are large enough to hold a full-size cold steel shovel or a full-size boy's ax with the head down. It will also hold an entire Pathfinder canteen set or a military canteen set for that matter. And it will almost hold two water bottles side by side, 32 ounces. Not quite, but almost. So you've got a very large pocket with a drain hole in it on both sides of this pack. You have one pocket on the outside of this pack at the bottom. And I use this pocket specifically for first aid. Generally when I'm carrying this backpack, it's with students. So you can see that this pouch is fairly small in the front of this thing, about the size of a small butt pack style pouch. But it carries enough in here to take care of blood loss, dehydration, and anaphylaxia. That's really what's important to me as an instructor to make sure that I can remedy in the field. That's why this pouch is here. It's so that you can put an external first aid kit here that you know where it's at, everybody knows where it's at, it's very accessible, and it's outside the pack. You don't have to get into the pack at all to get to it and you don't have to add a pouch for that reason because it's already there waiting for you. Now at the bottom of this pack, there are some straps and it comes with a set of cinch straps that you can put through here to attach a tent or some type of folding sleep pad if you wanted to, to the bottom of this pack and it has heavy molly webbing for that. It also has a zippered pocket here at the bottom that contains a bright orange rain sleeve that covers the pack completely. So you have not only a signaling device, you also have a safety device if you're hunting and you need to cover your backpack with something orange when you're carrying a bird out or something like that with you. You can cover your whole backpack with that orange and it also gives you rain protection from the pack. So those are three elements at the bottom of this pack and then the two side pockets. Again, you do have some molly on the sides. If you wanted to attach a water bottle pocket or something like that to it, you could. But again, these pouches are large enough. You can put any water bottle or canteen system in here. You're not going to have a problem or a full-size axe or a shovel head like a cold steel shovel. Now, it's got two simple buckles on the front and one row of molly here. I've just got a T-bar attached here. And what I do with that is I keep a roll of one-inch duct tape right there hanging off the front of it so it's easily accessible for repair or first aid for any of that kind of stuff okay now again it does have a roll top that has velcro on it here that you can roll down and buckle up obviously just like this just cinch it up 
Then it has a lid that goes over top of everything. That lid has a Velcro panel on it here. As you can see, what I've got on mine is my blood type and no known drug allergies, as well as a Pathfinder School Worldwide patch. Again, this is just for if someone finds me injured in the field. It's information, okay? That's easily attached to my backpack. This lid does not have a pocket on the inside. This has a zipper on the front of the top of the backpack lid so that you can easily access things on the trail without having to open the backpack to get to them. And I think that's important. Now, what do I keep in the top of this? Let's just go through this a little at a time. We already talked about the first aid kit. Now we'll talk about what goes in this lid. Things that I may need on the fly quickly in the field, all right? So I generally keep a few wet wipes in there. I keep a notebook and a pen in there. I keep a signal panel or waypoint marker in there that's made from Kevlar that I can use for things around the fire if I want to as well, or a pad if I'm using a knife or something and I'm afraid I'm gonna cut myself, I have that Kevlar pad that I can use. Multi-functionality, that's the key to that really. My headlamp, my Pathfinder ultralight headlamp is in there. I have the lid in here for my grail cup, but it could also be the lid for my Pathfinder water bottle cup depending on what system I'm carrying for hydration. A spare lighter and an ExoTac waterproof sleeve, a set of cables for my phone and things like that, camera, all that kind of stuff. And I also have a pouch that's got my compass, pacing beads, an extra light, and a notebook and a pen in that pouch that are separate because I've got this set up so that I can actually wear it on my belt, all right? Those are the things that go in the top of this pack, just like this. Easily accessible on the trail when I need them. I've got everything there from, I gotta go to the bathroom right now, to I need to write a quick note, to I need to look at my navigational situation, to I need to put a waypoint marker out, to I need to start a fire real quick. It's all right there, okay? Now, other fire elements obviously are within this kit, but that's within the top of the kit that I don't have to get into the pack to retrieve, all right? now. Let's talk about the things we're going to put inside this pack first, and then we'll talk about how we're going to put them in the pack. Okay, there's a couple more items that go on the outside of that pack, and we'll put them on the outside after we put the things we need to on the inside. So let's start off by talking about this whole two-thirds sleep system thing, okay, as far as bulk or weight. And in my case, it's going to be more bulk than weight because I'm trying to carry fairly ultra-light things for my sleep system so that it doesn't add a lot of weight to my pack which gives me the room to carry more weight in things like tools and hydration like water without overweighing my pack. I try to keep my pack weight down below 35 pounds wet weight, in other words, with water and food. So let's talk about, first of all, summer season, okay? Summer season, I generally don't carry a whole lot. Summer season is generally a hammock. This is just a hammock gear hammock. And a hammock tarp, a Dyneema hammock tarp. So there's your package for that. Now, I would also carry with that a Swagman roll just in case I got a cool night. This can be used for an underquilt or it can be used inside for an overquilt. So if I get just a little bit of a cool nippy night, I've got that. And I've also got something I can wear around camp in the morning if it's fairly chilly till I get a fire start. So there's your in on under, right? So you're inside this sleeping bag system possibly or inside this quilt. You're sleeping on top of a hammock and you're sleeping under a tarp. So you've got a three part system there. Now, if you go to the ground with that, then you change to something like a ground style tarp, possibly a swagman roll and a lighter weight pad for the ground. This is just an inflatable air mattress. I use inflatables a lot. Lots of people don't like them. They don't bother me a bit. People are like, well, you're gonna puncture that thing. We're gonna talk in a minute about how not to do that. And one piece of gear that I always carry regardless that keeps that from happening. So again, you've got a three piece system of on, in, under, all right? Whether you're on the ground or whether you're in the trees, it's up to you. Now, we get into later in the season where it's going to get cold, 
We're going to go to something with a lot more R value like this XPED that is R value of 7, okay? And then again, you're still going to go with that. This is your on. Under can be, again, just a tarp. And in is either going to be one of two things. For me, most likely, it's going to be a down over quilt. This is a hammock gear burrow. You can do one of two things with this. You can stuff this into a Dyneema dry bag, or you can just jam this thing down in your pack and stuff it in your pack around and mixed into everything else. We'll talk about how we do that here in just a minute because I find it better to stuff this thing in my backpack if I'm gonna carry it in my backpack than to carry it in something like a large dry bag like this because the bulk and the way it sits in the pack is completely different depending on how you do it. So it's easier to stuff it in my opinion. So that gives you a couple different options there as far as summer to winter. As it gets to the winter time, I'm probably gonna go to the ground. Now, if I could, if I wanted to sleep in a hammock in the winter time, I have that option. Then I'm gonna need an overquilt and an underquilt. So I keep the burrow as my overquilt, and then I would carry an underquilt as well. And I've got a hammock gear underquilt, and I would stuff both of those in the backpack. And you'll see that when you stuff this, it doesn't take up much bulk because you compress that down insulation inside there. The problem with that is leaving it compressed for a long period of time. So you don't want to do that until you're going to go out and use it. Any other time you want this thing loose like I've got it now so that it, the insulation does get compressed and stay that way. It has to have loft to be effective. So you want to store that thing loose in a larger bag at your house or in your gear shed. And then when you get ready to pack it out, you can either stick it in a stuff sack like this or you can stuff it in your backpack, which we'll talk about. All right, so let's discuss some of the other things that are going to go inside this backpack. Well, one of them is going to be some type of bush pot, most likely. This is a one-quart bush pot in a Dyneema bag with the stove inside. And I've got a separate canister here that I will put in the pack as well. So that's basically my cook system. If I'm not going to use my bottle and cup, I'll use this as my cook system. All right. The next thing I have is a bag of titanium steaks, large titanium steaks. You can get these on our website and a small mesh bag that I call my rope bag. And it's got a couple extra pieces of paracord in it, utility lines, things like that, and a small roll, 100 foot roll of number 36 bank line. So that gives me my cordage and my steak and my tarp. I have a map bag here that's got a map of the area that I operate in and a few tools and protractors and things like that for navigation. And also on the inside of my pack, I carry the Powerfilm Lightsaver Max. I've done a review on this already, but you can check it out. But this is a 40 watt solar panel that's wrapped around and attached to a brick that can charge any electronic device I've got. And I can recharge the brick on the fly using the sun and the solar panel to do it. And it will charge my phone, my cameras, my radios, my GoPros, whatever I want to charge and run, this thing will do it. It sits up nice and easy right in the side of the pack. So it's a very good asset to me. The last thing that goes inside the pack is my food bag. I don't say it's the last thing that goes in, but it's the last thing we're gonna talk about. And simple food is what I'm after. So I've got some Pathfinder provisions in here, a couple breakfasts and a couple dinners. I've got a set of military utensils in here. I've got some coffees in here, salt and pepper shaker in here. And that's pretty much it, right? Some hot chocolate, a couple energy bars, stuff that's easy to get to on the fly, nothing that's gonna not fit in this bag. This has to be three to four days worth of food in this bag for it to be, you know, fit in the system that I wanna use. And I can easily do that with this bag. And again, you know, this Dyneema food bag is also available on our website, but it's a really nice, non bulky heavy duty bag you can put your food in. That's what I use for my food in my backpack. Now I've got four more items over here that I carry on the outside of my backpack and we'll talk about those when we pack up the pack. All right, the one thing we didn't discuss is a six inch, large six inch ferro rod. And I keep this in my pack generally one of two places. I either keep it in my food bag with a spare lighter or I keep it in the top pocket of my backpack. The last time I was out, I was cooking food and started a fire with it and I put it back inside my food bag. So that's where it was. Okay. I always have that six inch ferro rod as well as a couple cigarette lighters. Again, two or three ways to start fire. That's what you want. That doesn't necessarily mean you have two or three different ways. If you've got a, this and you've got your lighter 
and you got a magnifying glass on your compass. That's three different ignition methods you've got right there. But there's nothing wrong with carrying a couple extra lighters as well, one in your backpack, one in your pocket, one in your food bag. It never hurts and they don't weigh anything. All right, so a Swagman roll or an overquilt is gonna be the first thing in this pack because the last thing I'm gonna need to pull out. So I'd either stuff my down quilt in there and put everything on top of that, which is gonna compress it down to the bottom. Or I would just take the Swagman roll and drop it in the box. So whichever one you're carrying, that's what's gonna go in first. And I try to lay that thing in there kind of flat so that that's taking up no more room than the bottom of that backpack. So the next thing we're gonna need is we're gonna need a tarp, right? Let's talk about a ground camp situation. Now, if we're gonna use a tarp, that may be one of the things that we wanna get out fairly quickly. So I'm gonna leave that for the moment. The next thing that's probably gonna go in here is my ground pad. So we'll go ahead and assume that's a colder weather scenario in this case, and we'll go ahead and put this X-bed pad in there. I'm gonna lay it down sideways in here, and that gives me some room here in the front to play with, right? Now, one of the things we didn't talk about with this pack, and I think it's really important, especially in the colder weather, and even in wet weather, is inside this pack in the back, most packs have a stiffener in them for their internal frame. I made sure that this one was something that was made out of the same type material that ground pads or kneeling pads are made out of, so that it can be pulled out of the pack and used for a kneeling pad, and then put back in the pack as a stiffener when you get ready to leave camp. So you've got that multi-functionality built into this pack to have a kneeling pad that's part of the pack. All right, so now what we've done is we've put our Swagman roll, and we put our air mattress in here. Now we've got room in the front right here. What are we gonna do with that room? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our rope bag in there in the front, just like that. And we're going to put our steak bag in there as well, in the front. And now we've got a little compartment over here on the side. What we're gonna do now, is we're gonna take this solar device and we're gonna shove it right down the side of this dude, straight down to the bottom and to the back. So it sits right here, okay? Now remember that my compass is here. My map stuff has to go in there yet. My food has to go in there yet. My cooking stuff has to go in there yet. And my tarp has to go in there yet. But my tarp may be one of the first things I need. So I don't want to get it too far down inside there. So generally what I will do next is I will put the bush pot and the tank in there. I'll put the tarp in front of those two to fill up that gap again in the front. I'll put the tarp there. And then I'll generally take something like a shemag, because I almost always have a shemag with me. And I'll kind of tuck that into that small hole that's been created in there where there's tank and that bush pot are sitting here and here. And I've got a little bit of space right here. I'll fill that up with a shemag. And that brings me up to about right here in the pack, which means this thing's not even close to being full yet, okay? Now, the last thing that'll go in here will be my food bag and my map case. And I generally put my map case in there flat with the food bag right on top, just like that. And then that gives me this much room. I'm right to there right now. So I've got all of this room, this roll down room to put something else in here if I need it. And that would generally be either a piece of rain gear or something like this whoopee hoodie if I needed an extra layer. That would go in there then and I would then roll the thing down and be good to go. Now, you can see I got plenty of room here. I'm clear right to these clips. I don't, I've got plenty of room in here to clip this up, come back to the back side here, draw these things all the way down because this lid's got an adjustment on it. I can draw this thing all the way to the bottom and there's plenty of room left to pack stuff in that pack. That's not even close to being full, all right? And there we go, it's all neatened up. Now, we've got a couple things we need to put on the outside of this pack that we're gonna talk about now. All right, so the first thing that goes on the outside of this pack is gonna be my grail and nesting cup. And it would be my water bottle and nesting cup 
if that's what I was carrying. And I could always carry a water bottle and nesting cup on the other side if I wanted to, and the grail on this side. But you can see how deep that pocket is. It's a very large cup, and it almost swallows that entire cup, okay? The other side of this pack, where the pocket is, is gonna have two things. Number one is a sheet of Tyvek, and this sheet of black Tyvek is something I cannot overstate how useful this thing is, and it weighs absolutely nothing. This is what keeps your sleeping pad from getting punctured, and it also makes a great ground sheet for you if you are working on the ground and you just sit down for a little while and do something and you need some area to work that's dry, this will give it to you. So I slide that down inside the side pocket. Right beside that is my silky saw, okay? So go back to this conversation of saw versus ax, all right? If I'm camping, I want to be able to buck large amounts of wood fairly quickly and I want to be able to do it as safely as possible. A large, big boy silky saw will buck a ton of wood very, very quickly for a camp. If I'm not going to have to be chopping down a bunch of trees, and there's a lot of deadfall around and things like that, this bad boy right here is the ticket. This thing eats wood like a beaver, no question about it. If it's real cold outside, the wood's possibly frozen, or I have a lot of large trees around and not so much stuff laying around brush-wise, then I'm possibly going to carry an axe. But for me, the weight, the bulk, and the safety of a saw far outweighs using an ax if you don't have to have one with you. Ground sheet right in front of that. And then I have a 50-foot hank of rope here for emergencies that I just have attached to a carabiner. And I just carabiner that right to one of these molly slots on the side of my pack, just like this. And just let her, let her hang on the outside, just like that. So I've got duct tape here, easily accessible. I have first aid, easily accessible. I have hydration, easily accessible. I have a cigarette lighter in my pocket and I have more fire starting devices up here. All the things we talked about up here that I might need right away, easily accessible. And cutting firewood, ground cloth, all easily accessible. So the things that I may need right away are either in the top pocket or on the outside of the pack. The things I'm not gonna need right this second are on the inside of the pack. And all of my sleep gear and things like that are protected inside this pack so nothing gets damaged. And that's the importance a pack really plays. You can carry lots and lots of ultra light gear. But if you don't have a backpack that can protect that gear, especially in a place like Ohio, where it's nothing but bushes, brambles, thorns, and hateful roses, you're, that ultralight gear is not going to last you very long. So you want to carry it in something that's heavy duty. And then you can reduce the weight by carrying ultralight gear. And that's what I do. I kind of mix the heavy duty bulletproof gear with the ultralight to give me a pack that even with this much stuff in it right now, weighs under 30 pounds. Okay? Okay, so let's kind of review this list. 10 C's. Covered in the pack, no problem. Pathfinder rule of threes. We had three ways to start fire. We've got our in, on, under. We've got three different types of containers in there with a bush pot, a metal cup with a lid, and we've got the grail. So we have three containers. You only saw one cutting tool because you saw the saw. You saw the saw. Okay. Belt knife, S-A-K. Three cutting tools, all right? Bear those things in mind. Two-thirds sleep system. You saw that the bulk of that pack, the bulk of the bottom of that pack, at least a little over halfway full, was sleep system. All right? So we follow that rule. Seasonal considerations we talked about. Are we going to carry an axe versus a saw or an axe and a saw? Are we going to carry a heavy-duty ground paddle? Are we going to carry something lighter weight? Are we going to carry an underquilt or overquilt? Are we just going to carry one or the other? All those things are seasonal considerations. And then our stack pack methodology means first used, last in, all right? Very, very simple methodology. The last thing I'm probably gonna need goes at the bottom. The things I'm gonna need sooner go at the top. And that's the way my mentality works. And anything I think I might need right away or on the fly is gonna be easily accessible on the outside or in an exterior pocket so I don't have to open the pack to get to it, especially in inclement weather. All right, so I hope that helps you guys out. Remember that this new Dark Earth and OD backpack is going to release in about two weeks. 
We have a couple of hundred of them coming in, I think, on the first shipment, and they will be 164.95 ish. Very, very good deal for a very, very nice lifetime manufacturing warranty backpack. So don't forget about that when the time comes. I don't know how much more social media blast I will give it before that. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business, for our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.